what is up guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to the rc vlog if you're new to my channel new to my vlog my name is mark santa maria i am an rc enthusiast i've been in the rc hobby remote control car hobby for over 15 years been racing for over 12 and it's just what i really like to do so i'm probably best known for my rc podcast on the tone that's where we talk about all the different race stuff that's going on in the nation actually all over the world i also travel a lot all over the nation racing rc cars i have several sponsors Instead of me spouting them out, I'm actually just gonna put them on the screen right over on one of these sides over here. All right, so before we go into the topic of this video, please, if you're an avid watcher, go smash that like button. I've noticed a lot of people watching my videos, but they're not smashing that like. That like helps build my exposure to my channel, and I would really like to do more things. Uh, a lot of exposure lets me give away more stuff, so go smash that like button. If you're new, please smash the like button. So without further ado, let's go into the video. All right, so it's Christmas time. You got a new RC car. It's one of the coolest ones you saw over at Walmart. You open it up and you're excited about it. It's cool, it's got big wheels, it's got suspension. You're excited about to see how fast it goes. You get you some AA batteries for the remote. Actually, back then, it was the nine volt batteries for the for the remote. And then you, you probably use AA batteries or like C batteries or something for the car. And you put them in there. Get excited, you go outside, you drive it. And one of three things happens. You either, is that good boys? Yep. It's a little cold today, so we're getting some hot chocolate and some coffee. So one of three things happens. You either run it for about five minutes and the fun is over, the battery is dead, it doesn't do anything. You drive it until you break it. And then once you break it, your dad get your mom and dad get mad at you. You get mad at yourself. I don't know, maybe it's for yourself. And it just doesn't work. Or the even, probably the worst thing that can happen is it's boring like it wasn't fast nothing really happened like you wanted more out of it you wanted to go faster you want to see more things happening you wanted to be able to go in the grass a lot of them couldn't go in the grass and you're like man this this could have been fun but it just wasn't enough but i have good news for you guys there is an answer the answer is hobby grade rc cars so hobby grade rc cars are cars that you don't buy at walmart target radio shack is, is radio shack even open anymore Anyways, you buy them at a hobby shop and they are so much fun. That's why I love them. But they will go from up to 45 minutes, almost to an hour worth of runtime on one battery pack. You can recharge the battery pack pretty quick. Nowadays, chargers can charge them up in 20 minutes and they hit upwards, with, upwards in the numbers of 100 miles per hour. That's how fast they go. They're super durable and when you break them, if you break them, you can replace the parts. The replacement parts are anywhere between two and ten dollars. It's awesome. So where do you get them? Well, you got to go on Google. You got to search for them. You got to look for a hobby shops, and not to be confused with Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby does not sell hobby grade RC cars. Probably the most mainstream hobby shop out there is a hobby shop called Hobby Town. I personally go to my local hobby shop, which is independently owned, called Indie RC World. They got great stuff over there. So. Go search for hobby shops and go check them out. All right, so you find the hobby shop you like, you walk in there and I'm not gonna lie, you're probably gonna be overwhelmed. There's gonna be stuff everywhere. There's gonna be cars everywhere. You're not gonna know which one to look at. You're not gonna know which one to get. You're not gonna know anything about it. Well, I'm here to help. First and foremost, unless you are just a glutton for punishment and you just want to just have, want to pull your hair out, Stay away from the nitro cars. You're not ready for the nitro cars yet. Nitro cars run off of nitro methane, use a special gas. There's a lot of stuff that goes on the nitro car. Leave those alone. The best advice I can give you is go to whoever's working in the store or the shop and ask them what they sell the most of. You want to buy the car that has the most support at your local hobby shop. In my case, at NDRC World, they support a lot of the Traxxas cars. So Traxxas cars, Traxxas is actually in my hometown. It's right, essentially next door to me. I can grab whatever part I need. So you wanna grab whatever car has the most possible support in your area. So when they tell you what car they sell the most of, it's either gonna be a kit car, which a kit car is a car that you have to build from scratch. Basically all the parts are completely separate. You gotta put it together. Or you can get what they call an RTR, which is a ready to run. A lot of RTRs these days come with everything you need. That's your remote control, your battery charger, your battery, but some RTRs will only come with the remote control, won't come with a battery and charger. My suggestion is look for the ones, if, 
again, depending on your budget, but look for the ones that come with a battery and charger. All right, so you picked out your car. You figured out which one you wanted. In this case, I picked up the new slash four wheel drive brush by Traxxas. This car comes with a battery. This car comes with a charger and it's ready to run out of the box. I actually strategically picked this one because I actually talked to some guys at Traxxas and this is one of the hottest selling trucks this Christmas. They usually only had the brushless. They used to only have the brushless slash four by four. Now they have the brush one. This is a hot, hot commodity. So I'm doing it on this one. Again, this one comes with battery and charger. It comes with a DC charger. So there's two different types of chargers, the DC charger and then an AC charger. DC, basically you plug into your battery. A lot of times it will come, in this particular case, it will come with like a lighter port, a car battery, or you'll need a power supply to charge it. I suggest you get an AC charger. So in this case, this one didn't come with a DC charger. So you have to get the AC to DC power converter, power supply thing with it. So I got this, but I'm gonna open it up, show you guys what comes with it, and also kind of show you guys parts of the car and what to expect. So I mentioned brushed and brushless just now, and I realize you guys probably don't know what that means. You will come across that whenever you're looking at electric cars. Basically, without trying to get into the technical part with it, brush uses contact to turn the rotor, to actually turn the motor. There's actually brushes that contact the rotor and turn the motor. And brushless does not make contact, just uses magnets or energy. Honestly, I don't know. But long story short is brushless is more expensive, more efficient, but it is a lot faster and has a lot more power in this case brushed it still have it still has a lot of power you can still have like a lot of power brush motors but for the most part the newer stuff is going to be brushless again it's a little pricier but brushed will be just fine so here's the car let's take the body clips off so basically the body is held on by these small clips i'm going to kind of go through this not super fast but i have a lot of videos with unboxings also you can check out so you have your body it's a really cool body actually we'll put that one actually we'll put it right here and then here is your car so this is what the car looks like so you, the components of the car this right up here is your steering servo so basically this steers the car this right here is your speed control this controls the output that gets pushed to your motor so it basically controls your speed of your car here's your motor down here so again this is a brush motor brush motors have two wires that go into the speed control brushless motors have three wires and then your battery, and this is your connector. So it will also come with your remote control, which is great. Again, there's already a battery in here. And then in this little package, and most RTRs will come with all these things also. This isn't just Traxxas, but in this particular case, since we're opening a Traxxas, this is what it's gonna come with. Comes with your charger. Again, this is a, this is a DC charger, so we basically you plug it into your lighter port in your car, it charges pretty fast. I was told that it charges about 45 minutes. So if you're going to grandma and grandpa's house or someone far, somewhere far, you can charge it on the way. But with this, you'll be able to plug it. You'll be able to plug it in and charge it. Plug it in the wall and charge it. Also it comes with some pieces like this. These are what they call um, shock shock uh, ride adjustment clips, shock C clips. I don't know the technical term for it, but. They basically adjust your ride height and basically you clip these pieces on and it adjusts your ride height on your car. So you'll have some extra pieces here. You actually have some pistons too. These actually go inside your shock and it will change the dampening of your shock. And then you have some tools. So these tools here, basically it's gonna be all your hex wrenches that you need. It's gonna be a two five hex wrench. These are all metric, metric uh, drivers or Allen wrenches. Two five, a two, and then a one five. And then this little T piece, which we'll go ahead and open this up. Oh, this little T piece will be what takes your wheels and tires off. It also does something else, actually on the two wheel drive, we won't mention that. Takes your wheels and tires off and it has all the different nut drivers that you need on this little T piece. Also in here, you're gonna have this block right here. Um, basically these foam blocks are to adjust the size of the battery. If you're running a smaller battery, a LiPo battery, you can put this in there and it will adjust 
how big the battery is or how, how much how big of a battery you can put in there that way it doesn't kind of roll around or slide around in there and then you have extra body clips you will lose body clips and then all your manuals and stuff all right so the pieces that it won't come with it will not come with batteries for your remote maybe some kits come with batteries for remote Traxxas kits don't come with batteries for remote so you're gonna need double a batteries and some of the things that I like to check whenever I get a brand new kit is I like to check the ride height there's a reason why these ride height gauges are in here and essentially what you want to do is you want to drop the car um, some people push it down and move it around but you want to drop the car on the table and then see how the ride height is set so I like my arms the arms of the car to be perfectly level and just a little bit higher in the back so out of the box they're pretty set they're set pretty well like I don't I'm gonna think I'm gonna adjust anything here it's set really well but over time as the springs get worn in you might have to add some more shock adjusters to get the ride height correctly basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna make your car handle better it's gonna be able to go over bigger jumps and things like that so there's really nothing much more about it really you just take the battery out take the battery out I'm gonna charge the battery up Show you guys how to do this I'm gonna pull this out of here luckily the connectors are all done up already that's why it's great to get an RTR car as your first hobby car because there's not there's really not much to think about you just plug and play and go you put your batteries in your controller which four double A's in this case so here's my charger this is a converter piece so basically I'm gonna plug this in here plug this into the wall you know what I'll do it right now I think I got a plug back here all right so I got it plugged in it's red that means it's ready very self-explanatory all the different light the lights the statuses are all on on this box there's only one way to plug it in tracks this really good with their connectors when it comes to safety and making sure you don't cross cross polarity so you just plug it in and there you go it is charging that blinking means it's charging so as soon as it gets to all green we will be good to go and we'll throw it in this car and start driving one hour later all right so we're all charged up see solid green we're good there so we're gonna plug this i did a horrible job at explaining the uh adjusting the ride height so those clips actually clip onto the shock i don't want to show you guys right now because it's perfectly done but essentially they go under the spring and that's how you adjust ride height you don't really have to worry about that right now but i'll probably do a video about that later anyways so the battery's all charged up i put batteries in the remote one part that i didn't point out in this little box right here is what they call the receiver so this is your transmitter and this is your receiver in there is what communicates to the remote control so you don't have to take that off it comes binded binding meaning there's already a connection out of the factory but it's good to know that it's in there just in case you decide you want to run another remote you drop the remote you need to replace it and also there's a little light in there to make sure that kind of indicates whether your your receiver is binded with or communicating with your transmitter but i'll show you guys all how that works right now when i plug this in so got the battery it is normal that your battery is a little warm whenever it's done charging that's actually a good thing if the battery is warm that means it's got a nice full charge on it so i'm going to put the battery in now it's always good to turn your remote on first so turn your remote on let me grab this stand right here look it's orange it matches the car so perfect so i'm putting it up on a stand just in case when i turn it on it's not calibrated correctly so when i when i say calibrated correctly that means that when i turn it on what the what the, the what the receiver thinks the remote is telling it to do is to go so it's always good to put it up on something whenever you turn it on to turn it on there's a little button on the speed control which the speed control is this little blue piece you push it and it turns green so it's green now and it looks like it's blinking red the on the receiver box you can actually see there's a little light on the receiver box also that's green that means it is connected to your to the remote hmm there's something else wrong
All right, so I figured out <laughs> I figured out what that blinking was. That blinking was basically this model was expecting a lipo battery, and I kind of explained that a lipo battery has a cutoff. And when it was expecting a lipo battery, when it read this battery, it actually thought that the lipo was too low. That's why it was blinking and it wasn't moving. So I had to convert, change the ESC to a nickel metal to accept the nickel metal hydride battery. And basically the way I did it, it's on this little thing, but you basically, when the ESC is on, you push and hold it, which you guys will see whenever, I'll actually just roll the footage of me doing it. Anyways, it's running now. So, the easiest way to understand how this remote goes, so a lot of people are gonna be kind of intimidated by this remote because you're probably used to like a joystick remote. So to go forward, you push the trigger back. To brake and go in reverse, you push the trigger forward. That's reverse. But if you're moving forward and you hit that, it's brake. And then the easiest way to do the steering is if you think of yourself inside the car, if you turn it to the right, it turns to the right. If you turn it to the left, it turns to the left. So there's also this little knob right here. This little knob adjusts your steering trim. And what that means is it's possible that when you start driving your car, it doesn't go straight. So the way you adjust your steering trim is you just turn this knob and it essentially, and I'll, actually I'll turn it this way so you can see. <clears throat> it essentially trims the car, basically adjusts your steering so it's straight. So let's hope, I'll set it to zero, which is supposed to be right in the middle. And let's hope that it's straight that way. So another piece that is important to know and that it's very useful is there's actually different driving modes for this ESC. And most ESCs, and this ESC is a speed control, most ESCs have this option. They have what they call a beginner mode. And essentially what beginner mode does is it, it basically throttles everything back so it runs 50%. So whenever you go full throttle, it's only 50% throttle. Whenever you go full brake or full reverse, it's only 50% of the reverse. It's so if you're not familiar with the car, you're not comfortable, you're not sure, you can set it to beginner mode and it won't go as fast. I would show you how to do it here, but that's not what this video is about. It will show you how to change all those modes in the manual. And I believe it actually shows you how to change the mode on these things that are attached to the car. But in this particular case, I'm not gonna change it. I'm gonna leave it where I can do reverse. It's full full throttle, it's ready to go. The good thing, <laughs> the good thing is, as I showed you, I know that was kind of a, a fail with the light on. What's good about that is we've identified that Traxxas cars out of the box with a Nukemoto hydride hydro battery they do need some adjustment. It's not just plug and ready to go. You got to adjust the ESC to accept a nickel metal hydride battery. I'm excited to get this thing out there. I'm gonna say there's a couple of other things I wanna point out. On a lot of cars, there's what they call a slipper clutch. And what a slipper clutch is, is that there's a gear that's on your motor and the gear that's on the car. And the gear that's on the car is typically plastic. So what a slipper clutch does is it's actually, it makes that gear, that plastic gear slip a little bit. So that way when you jump off curves or you land or something, it doesn't break the teeth off that plastic gear. And it's set, sometimes it can be set, especially with nitro cars. Um, Traxxas nitro cars, Traxxas Revo is infamous, infamous for this. I actually bought one because of this before, because um, the guy didn't know what was wrong. But a lot of times that slipper clutch can come loose and basically how that slipper clutch is built, there's a nut on it that makes the clutch tighter or looser and sometimes that nut just comes loose. If you got the car and you're trying to drive it and it just seems like it's not really going, it's like you can hear the motor spinning and it's trying to spin but it's going really slow or it's just not moving very much, a lot of times it's a slipper clutch that loosened up. Read your manual, there's a nut on there, you just tighten the slipper clutch, tighten it all the way down and then back it out just a little bit and then your slipper clutch should be good to go and that should fix your problem. The reason why I bring that up is I get that question a lot. A lot of people ask me that question on what's going on, but for the most part, this thing is ready to go. All right, here we go. First time running this thing. Whoa! Almost fell.
Well, there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching this video. I need to give a big shout out to NDRC World for helping me do this video. Uh, they've supported me all through 2018, 2019. They're going to be supporting me through 2020. It's great to have a local hobby shop that supports the racers like that. Big thanks to them. Thanks for all my subscribers and watchers. And most importantly, Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you guys have a good rest of the year, and I will see you all soon. Later, guys.